Welcome back to Muscle Serpents University. I'm sitting here with a, a very good friend of mine and one of the best boa breeders probably in the history of boa breeding, Jeremy Stone. Welcome to the show. Dave, great to see you. Jeremy, I, you know, you're a hard guy to you know get uh, pinned down, but you know what? For the last couple of years, I've been chasing you and I've been saying, look, I got to get you on the show. I really, you have so much knowledge in that head of yours. And, you know, this. There's a lot, you know, there's so much out there on ball pythons, but really boa constrictors are still kind of like this, like, you know, thing people kind of whisper about and they don't really uh, open up as much as as maybe some of the other snake breeding, uh, you know, uh, I guess you could species, so to speak. And so I, I want to get here. I want to pick your brain. And you I think can do all, people... you can you can have full access to me. Uh, full <laughs> access to me, Dave. I'm happy that, you to know, talk about it. You and I have a lot of interesting subjects, really. Yeah. You know, you have mentioned your health. I appreciated your phone call. You asked some of the best questions out there. So you yeah. and I have talked about doing this um, many times, and uh, it's good to see you. I'm going to go down to Florida. I've got to, I'm going to head that way, so I might come oh, cool. by. Miami's a little bit Playing out of by. the way. Yeah. But I'm going to go by. visit my dad and visit a couple other snake breeders, get some ideas on the new building that I'm building now that should be up by June. So... No, you, you, I've got you a had a busy, you had a you had a very very nice building that you kind of what 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 happened uh -huh. what happened with the old building and then now the new building what, okay so the other property know. that I have I bought the property behind myself okay okay so out in Utah I'll run out there when we can get on that phone that you were showing me before when I want to show you some cool snakes I'll click off the yeah. computer we'll go right onto that and I'll show you just a beautiful landscape of Utah why I like to live here um, sure and where I live and where the property and we're under construction, so you'll see I'm in a construction okay. site. So the old property, um, I had sold bought the property behind. Same same amount of property, Got just it. a downsized house, but I can now do different snake buildings. So I had a different I have a different building now. I'm doing a big, uh, larger building that will that will probably help suffice my needs for retirement. I don't want to get bigger than you know the big massive building. I I know what right. I'm doing, so got to downsize a little bit. So. Sure. Well, yeah. you know, you got you got to focus sometimes too. Sometimes you get overwhelmed. You get so much going on that it's like becomes not only it's no longer a labor of love. It's it's kind of like you're you you hate it because it's too much, right? Well, honestly, it's it's good to have different facilities because it brings back your your challenge. It back it gives you back your young blood. How do I do things different? Humidity. You and I were talking about the hydrofogger. I'm going to show it to you. Show you how oh, to cool. set it up. Show you how boas really need to be. So mm -hmm. speaking of which, one of the first things I do in the morning, I'll show you. It's it's now 1030 here in, in Utah time. But yeah. uh, I got my shipments to go out today. I go and I check this computer, but I don't get on the social media as much. And now I'm starting to again. But here's what I'll do here. Siri, what is the temperature in Barranquilla, Colombia? <laughs> okay, right now it's 84 degrees, 79% humidity. The humidity is the key here. Um, Oh, Alexa, yeah, I, what's the temperatures smart. in snake room building one front? 84 degrees, 72% humidity. So that's just a, a copy example of what I do with today's technology there. That, you know, that's smart. And, so you basically look at what, what the temperature and, and humidity is in Colombia mm -hmm. and you say, well, that's what my snake should be at. And if, you know, if it's not, then we're off. So, I'm, so actually, you know, I, I just, after hearing that, my humidity is a little too hot, uh, low in, 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 my, in, my, in my facility. And a lot of people think, well, I live in Florida. I have high humidity. But I, I was telling you earlier, I got to run air conditions because it's almost too hot here. You know? And it's the exhaust system that will then drain your humidity. But you can solve yep. that with this issue that I'll, I'll go over with. And it's mm -hmm. very, it's, it's awesome. Pete Collin and I used to go on, on to this all the time. It was interesting to watch um, many other people. I've been in this business a very long time. Go back to the old days of Daytona. Um, not many people talk about that, that side of the business much anymore. It was fun days, way good people back then. A lot of interesting stories, crazy stories that we could just go on and on and tell. I'm but sure. I watched people build facilities. I talk about that in that DVD. I love to change things up, change rooms up, read balls with boas, temps. Mm -hmm. But building a new place really has helped. Um, shifting over to a, another place that has worked has helped. Um, so if you just copy your methods, and so last year didn't have a great – uh, bow year, good ball year. Um, ball pythons do it. They do it for you and your channel, and I, I like them, love them too. And I had, let's see, looking back at my board. Um, you have a lot of ball pythons though too, right? Yeah, I do. I actually do. I have some ball pythons. You why, gotta, why, did, why did people have a bad bow of breeding season last year? You've, you've mentioned that um, to me several times, and I, and I, and mm -hmm. I agree. I, I, a lot of people complained to me that they didn't have a good season. What was it? 
Um, well, I believe that if you can mock an environment and no matter where you're at, so if you're in Florida, um, sure. my family's in the South, I believe I could take my facility, my knowledge to the South and breed in Florida. You just have to mock the temperatures. So my seasons for bad, bad breeding, and, and I will say it like this, if you go into the wild population, which I have done, I've traveled, I've studied boas in the wild. And if you go into the wild population, it's similar to rabbits is how they put it. So um, rabbits, for instance, the jackrabbit in Utah has seasons of seven years, huge cycles. You can go out and shoot them all you want with your 22. Um, they're a nuisance. So in seven years, though, at once every seven years, they don't have a good cycle. Well, uh, talking to some trappers out and even through uh, Mexico up to um, even in red tail country in Guyana, Guyana um, up in Georgetown, they say that the boas come out in a season of every six years. They don't trap them. In fact, the quota is only about a thousand exports a year on a certain um, cycle year. So right. keep that in mind. That happens in nature. So it could have happened to me. Um, also, it's the selection that you choose. Yeah. For instance, you and I were talking about fire to this or that last year. Um, I had a lot of slugs, so many slugs, and that's disappointing. You know, you put your, your females through a season, you get slugs. But in the positive, you know, I, I got to stop, I gotta stop you. I got to stop you for a second, Jeremy, because you know what? Sure. As much as I love you, I love to hear that you say you had slugs. You know why? Because mm -hmm. you're one of the, the best boa breeders out there. And to hear that you failed just tells the other people out there that it's not about us. It's about the snakes. You can put them together. You can set up these conditions, humidity, temperatures. You do your drops. You do everything you're supposed to, and you still might get slugs. It doesn't matter because a lot of people, I internalize everything. When, I, when something doesn't go right, I, I, I figure that I'm the failure. But sometimes the boas don't want to breed. You know, that's, that's just that's the way it is. And it's strange that uh, you mentioned that because I've gone through, I look through, I keep a detailed journal, of, a big journal of my life. I mean, if you looked at my terabytes, uh, family journal snakes, but I go back mm -hmm. and I look at my records of 2012, 2009, I go back and study my charts and go back to where you were successful, where you weren't, why and what you were doing. And it's all really about your husbandry. Um, mm -hmm. It is. So it's what you keep your snakes out, how often you're feeding them. So mm -hmm. that's what it is. Uh, difficult about being the breeder is it really is up to you. I might not have paid as much attention to my animals now that I've had uh, two humbling seasons, I'd say. Mm -hmm. You know, if you here's the statistics, Dave. I believe if you are really taking good husbandry, good care of your animals, you get good quality stock. Um, realistically, a good boa breeder, um, if you have 10 good females, beautiful 10 mm -hmm. females, sure. I should say that you should be able to get seven of those 10 gravid if they're in that good cycle. Now, boas need a cycled season. Ball pythons all breed almost all year round right now. Mm -hmm. Very few clutches clutch one starting now, you know, and then it goes, it goes on. But you can breed them year round, almost the same temps as boas, humidity different. Um, but, but the boa constrictor does need that cycle. So the males need time off. Males will overbreed. They'll breed themselves to death. They court, they fight. So you have to pay attention to the males. And then your females will tell you everything you need to know. If you pay attention to the animals, if you go in and look at them twice a day, which isn't hard, and that's where people can get lazy. I mean, they'll think, oh, it's just so easy. But your females will tell you what you're doing. If I walked in and showed you this, I'd say, why is she sitting like this? Um, you have a nice hot spot for it. Uh, you click your temperatures, you know that you're keeping it right. She fed but she'll tell you what she needs. So in breeding, I'm always looking at my females and seeing what side of the cage they're on. That's why I like um, aesthetically looking through, I use the freedom breeder cages. Um, Me too, yeah. Some, yeah. With ball pythons, you know, you have to open the box or look, look through them, but that's a little bit easier, but I like to have caging where I can look at the snakes, put my eyes on them. They'll tell you what they need. I could go in and talk about 20 animals right now, and I'd say, this is this, this needs this today. This is this, this is what I'll do this week with this animal. So if you analyze that and then you're, you're providing the correct temperatures for them and fresh water is the key. So right now I am using pure water actually with all of my boas and, and I don't know if that matters or not because um, in the wild they drink out of bad rivers. So I mean, right, right, has right. Just rainforest. <laughs> so, uh, probably not a rain, good stuff. But yeah. um, I noticed that if, if you miss your boas and pay attention to them, humidity is the key. They like it, they love water. So, how much, how, much 
Yeah. Well, let, let's get, get stay with the bows for a second. So when you go into when, when you're getting ready to prepare them for the season, which is mm -hmm. I guess around November, right or so. Um, yep. Just I have scheduled dates, and October fifteenth, I start my cooling season right away. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. Um, sometimes going into a season, you have about a five to six month window, and mm -hmm. um, when you really start aggressively going at your breeding, some of those females need a few more months, but some females, if you're starting at two and a half or barely two by the time of the end of the season. So you have to pick right. those females. And so I have some strategies that I'll talk. I, I talk about it in the DVD. It's like group breeding strategies like that. If you have some females that have some smaller follicles, what? put them in with females that have larger follicles. Oh, really? And, then, and that'll uh -huh. make them grow? Yes, it you does. put those two actually. females together? Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. now, what so what do you I think find, is the mechanism of that? They, they the just kind of try to cycle it, each other. You line up their cycles with each other? Mm -hmm. And it could be... And you and I talked to this just on the phone, the male selection that you're choosing. If that male's really receptive to that female, because again, we're, we're making pets. Um, the industry has changed so much in thought, uh, just, just because of laws, types, things like that. Right now, you know, back in the day, boa constrictor breeders would fight about um, subspecies, uh, boa constrictor constrictor, true blood types, this and that, yeah. until, all of us more joined together with USR. We are creating pet boas. These are not, anybody knows if you're raising snakes, especially you in Florida, Miami, these are not meant for the wild. We're doing things opposite. We're making cool snakes that probably can never um, exist in the wild. So they're all pet snakes. So keep in mind when we're breeding mutations and stuff like that, we're not creating hybrids, we're creating integrates. Pretty much anybody who has a hypo boas or Colombian boa, they're integrated boas no matter what, um, Central America, Colombian. And we're keeping those as pets. Um, a classic example of that is uh, way back in the day, Tom Burke, you and I were talking about. Um, yeah, maybe sorry, rest in peace. Yeah. Away. yeah, Tom, um, good friend of ours. He and I did a, we, we went way back in the days of Daytona. And, uh, you know, he and I were talking a lot about this uh, leopard bows. He would buy, he got a lot of leopard bows. He's kind of mad at me once. And I bought all the leopard bows out of uh, <laughs> Daytona. I remember he was mad at me for something like that. And then, he ended up doing a lot of leopard stuff. I actually got some albino leopards from him mm -hmm. and I just have a small project in that. But back to those days of um, just that, that integrated cross, you know, people would start to breed hypos to Colombians and anybody that has a sunglo would do this. But Tom Burke and I bought these Honduran. The VPI line was extremely valuable back then. So Ben Siegel had on his table when we would crawl the areas, you know, where you, I could show you where we got the first yeah. IMG. I accidentally gave it to Pete. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> he um, Pete always accidentally found everything, Pete Carl. You know. Yeah, I, I told this kid on the IMG, oh, that looks cool. He comes up to me, has all these aneurysmic bows, and I loved aneurysms back then. I, mean, I can't remember the year, but I think this is like the early 2000s. And, yeah. and he shows me this black bow, kind of, and uh, I look at it, it's all aneurysmics, and he says, do you want? I said, sure, go show Pete Carl, but I shouldn't have said that. Oh, oh, and he so stole nice. it. He took it. <laughs> yeah, well, all is fair. So I have employees that make them up for a second, so I'll just mask up. But, okay. Um, yeah, so I've got uh, – he's going to show some really cool IMG stuff. I'm going to take you around and show you this really quick awesome. in, in a second. But first, so, um, today is a busy Monday, and I have shipments going out. I appreciate you getting one. I'm going to ship to you, uh, yeah. let's say – I'm going to try and do all my shipments on Wednesday for Thursday. Go FedEx with Ship Your Reptiles, of course. Yeah. So Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, I'm always shipping. It's either ball gotcha. pythons or a few boas. So okay. that's usually all my shipping dates. So i got to get my customers and let them know that uh, I'll be shipping on Wednesday, probably for Thursday. And in coronavirus yeah. land, I always go to Hub. I've had 100% success rate of shipping right. many, many times the temperatures. As long as they just go get it to Hub, it's usually earlier. I drop off late. Utah's the perfect time to ship. So if I ship to you, you're in Miami two hours late. I drop off at 6 p.m. my time. That's 8 p.m. your time. They're at your closest hub right there with Ship Your Reptiles at 9 in the morning. That's 7 in the morning my time. That's almost like me going to Delta Dash right. in the old days. It's, you know what? When you ship, though, to Florida, like to me, like uh -huh. I always tell people, just ship to my house because you know what? It's so warm here that it doesn't matter. Once it makes it to Florida, it, it, it's it for me. It's a forty-five minute ride to the hub. So if I would, I would prefer to have it sent right to my house, and because I, I can do that, that. I can and do that. In Florida. You house. can't, you uh, yes. can't do that in, in states where it's freezing. No, but I always yeah. recommend it, even if it's five minutes away. It doesn't get stuck yeah. on a truck. It doesn't yeah. get there. In most places, Ship Your Reptiles yeah. has a great, great function. If you type in your zip code, 
I could go there right now and, and just for example, you know, I'd go in and ship your reptiles, tells you the closest facility, I'll screenshot that to my customer, text it. And I do go there because they don't get stuck on truck. Uh, coronavirus out there, people are, it's just easy to walk in and get it and, and everything has been perfect that way. What, so I yeah. like it and I prefer that, but that, you know, I'll ship right to your place. I know yeah, you, yeah. and I'm sure that they'll be fine. Yeah. Let's get back to bow breed. So okay, yeah. October 15th, you decide to drop the temperatures. Do you touch your hotspots? Do you change your hotspots at all? I do. I actually you change do. the hotspots. Yes. So here's what I do. Um, throughout half the season, I talk to this and when, what I do with the hotspots. So I, I, I use the heat panels and I always yeah. give them a hot spot of 88 degrees. Right. If you click a female, a temp gun female, even a ball python female, that's why I incubate 88, 86, yeah. 88, 80, 90, you know, stuff like that. Sure. Uh, if you click a female right now, I could go and click female on eggs. She's coiled up, even though my room's only 84, and she's sitting there getting those eggs right to 88. Same thing on these gravid females. I'll walk in and show you. I'll say, what is this female doing? I'll show you the hot spot. She's going to be sitting right on there, right at 88. And the it. funny it's thing is, Jeremy, with, with these boas, with the boas, is, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, but I noticed in my facility, sometimes, you know, my hot spots are a little too hot or they'll be, they'll move a little away from the hot spot and they'll find the spot where it's 88. You know yes, what I mean? Yeah, they will. They'll do that. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's thermal regulation. So they'll take yeah. that temperature over. They really don't want to be that hot. Right. Although here's something that I do, and I don't know how, how often do you feed your females when you start breeding? That's a good question. Now, I I was always of the Vin Russo school where you don't feed them at all until they start getting to like I like I'll cool them for like eight weeks, ten weeks, and then and then I'll start giving them small meals like after that, you know. But okay, so you do you I go find my males are case? getting really thin. What? Yeah, your males. That's the key. The males are getting thin. Why? You told me that to feed the males because the males, yeah, are getting a little on the skinny, scrawny side, and and I've lost one or two, you know, over the years because I've of lost, that problem. Yeah. I've lost hundreds of males, Dave. I mean, I've really, they breed themselves to things. death. Is that you were telling me? I didn't know this. Yes, like, they're they not will. like ball pythons, you know. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, no, no. And so, it, you know, back in the day of when I was just a kid, reading the books that I was into, Philippe de Bajoli's, uh his. Uh, Boa Constrictor Keeper Guide. That's the only thing I could find back in back in the days before internet. And I, I'd read, if you ever want to get into boas, don't read boas. It's specifically what he said. Challenge to me after having the boa. So I bred it. You know, but back then I even bred in 90s. So I knew that you could breed in captivity. But um, just going back to the old dates of of what got me started. Yeah, what, what are you doing here, Dave? I like this. I'm pulling up your Instagram. This is a. Oh some man, I, I'm getting. I'm so bad at Instagram. I'm barely getting it going. I even tried yeah. some stupid little loop today. I couldn't get it to work, but my daughter's showing me how. So I'm getting <laughs> back into that stuff. I've got continue. Okay, continue. so yeah, I, I like Valuable. that pic though. I do like that picture, and you know, I, I like that you're going to the internet. So if there's yeah. something I'm going to text you, I'd like you to go to a link because I want to talk genes. That snake in particular. Let's keep yeah. that picture up. I'm going to okay. text you a link and I want you to pull it up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's talk yeah. genes. And then I want to show you some pictures. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to text you this link. Well, yeah, we'll let's, let's not lose focus. Genes. Yeah. Hold on. Let's just not lose focus. Let's, okay. let's stay on the, on the breeding and then we're going to go do genes and we're going to talk about fire diamond. That's, I mean that we're not. It, it, it all that comes well. together if you understand this. So I'll, I'll okay. talk genes where it comes together. So okay. that snake that you're, that you're looking at, we'll talk breeding and genes at the same time. Mm -hmm. If that's okay. So yep. I'm just going to, we're going to talk basic genes that anybody should understand. Phenotype, genotype, just quickly. Sure. Because you asked a good question about fires and they've got to understand the genes behind it. So I'm going to text you a link here, Dave, and then maybe you could open this up really quick and we'll talk about okay. it. Okay. All right. And breeding and why I breed. So when you, when you start just about. getting back to while you're doing that, when you're, when you're cooling, okay. How cold do you okay. get the room down to the ambient room temperature? Okay, so here's what I'll do. Uh, I'm going to open up this lacrosse app for you. My, my temperatures go down to 77 at night and 84 in the day. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. I got to find you. So, so you All raise right. the ambient back up to 84 during the day, or do you just raise the hot spot? Nope. The okay. hot spot stays at 88 at all times. Really? Okay. Uh huh. 88. Interesting. Well, it depends oh, so, on the size of, of how you're, what cage you're breeding. See, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're not, so you're not dropping the hot spot. You're only dropping the ambient. Is that what you're saying? Yes. I keep, okay, the, right, that, I that's what keep, I do. That's what I do. So here's the key though. I always keep a hot spot on my mm -hmm. females, no matter off season or on season. Okay. Of I the ambient temperatures. That. Yes. At 88 degrees. I do. However, the key is, is towards the end, 
when I can see some of the females, I'll put them in different racks and I'll put it on a timer switch mm -hmm. where I turn that hot spot off for 12 hours a day. So it clicks okay. on a timer switch, Alexa, timer on, and boom, uh, it's off. So I, I do give them a non hot spot for 12 hours for about two months of the year, if that makes sense. And that's just keeping a close eye on, on each particular animal when you're looking at them, doing things like that. So, all right, so this is, this is interesting because I don't do that. I'm, I'd be afraid of respiratory. So it's fine for 12 hours to have no hot spot as, as far yeah, as- Yeah, because concerned. if you're not gonna get respiratory issues, and I rarely get respiratory issues. That's, yeah. that's you know, it's, if you're gonna get a respiratory issue, it's probably um, a feeding issue. It's, it's more hungry, it's stressed. It's stressed um, probably mm -hmm. maybe striking the cage or hitting. You're not gonna get respiratory temperatures unless you really keep them in the low 70s. So okay. even as a pet boa, you can have it in your room, a nice little cage setup. You're going to keep that at, at 78 to 82. You're not going to have it barf. You know, it'll be a good pet. It should be a good hardy animal. But if you're right. getting them way down, and especially when they're breeding, they get stressed. So it's a stressful season, especially for the males. They exert a lot more energy than a ball python does. Mm -hmm. So right. I can breed one ball python up to eight females, seven females. Sure. One to five is what I try and keep it at. But with boas, being, this is the reason I go back to that past of that fleet de I was I was doing a lot of experiments where I, back in the day, I would have one boa and it would be four years in a row, four years in a row. You know, I, I hardly have that happen now. One sure. year, um, I do follow in this. And they don't, the reason I bring this up, I did a thousand copies of this uh, copyright. Nobody uses DVDs much anymore, but I, I sold I have, it. I have, you, I have that DVD. Yeah, it's, a good DVD. it's two hours of it. And we talk about yeah. pretty much everything. I go through my cycle, my seasons and everything. So mm. you're, you asked me a lot of good questions the other day on the phone. So I went back and even looked at my DVD and said, man, how do I get back to what I was doing when I was at 75%? You know, when I'm at 25%, like last year, that's pathetic. That, that's, yeah. that's just... That so what were your mistakes? What were the mistakes you were making? Do you think? What did humidity, you come up with? Humidity, not paying as much attention to the animal, feeding it when I should have been feeding it. Mm -hmm. Also, maybe trying and stretching a few females if they they reabsorbed the year before. Tried them, slugged out. I also believe it was my male selection. I didn't put the okay. right males with the right females or group breed as you and I were talking about earlier. Now. Are you are you a feeder or non feeder during that like you know eight week you know cooling period? Um, I'm a feeder on that. That I feed all the way almost up until they ovulate. So it's almost wow. like ball python. You never stop. So you never stop the food coming. Mm -mm. No, wow. I slow it Tom down. Tom Burke was like that. That's what Tom Burke told me too. But well, Tom and I would talk about that. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of different ways you can do it the other way and be successful mm -hmm. that way. Yeah. I just happen to notice because I now I got to get back to this. It's the ultrasounding. The, the ultrasounding is key. If you can pay attention to your boas, I like that you brought up respiratory infection. Um, that used to be a big issue. And the same with ball pythons back in the day with the, nobody would talk about it. You can't get people right. to talk about it because it's like, if I talk about it and I say I have respiratory infection and yeah, you're no, getting snakes yeah, right. from me, I'm shipping to Miami to you, right, Dave. Right, right, and right. Why would you want that? Because you know that you're dealing with it. Uh, the, first of all, let's go to the key to successful being in business and life, why do people come and buy snakes from me? Is because they know they're going to get a healthy snake. They're not going to get questioned on that. That's what we pride ourselves in. You do too. I know if I'm going to buy an animal from David Colombo, it's going to come. It's going to be a healthy snake. And I shouldn't have to worry about its health. The rest is up to me after a couple of weeks. But, you know, a lot of people can mess up boas easier than ball pythons. They'll overfeed it, sure. you know, stuff like that. So you send out babies and they, a couple of months later, man, it's barfing or why are you trying to feed it? Every three days, these aren't ball pythons. You Especially know, you, like the you, leopard you, boas. Yeah, I mean, leopard boa truth. babies, they, they, they are like the biggest regurgitators if you overfeed them. I mean, that's what I found too. Absolutely. And the true Sonoran leopards. But, you know, I found out with breeding the leopards out up more into different uh, bloodlines of, say, a hypocolumbian even, more line like that. I have a few of those. That they're, they're just awesome. They get big too. Big leopards. Mm. I mean, some of these. Uh, the albino leopards get big too. Yeah, yeah and, and so that's what I got from Tom Berg's. I had an albino leopard call. Me too. I don't have much of the call strain stock at all in my collection, except that project, um, maybe one or two other things. But I've yeah. chosen the Sharp project. You have, to, you have to pick different projects. And so nowadays, it's not about that race. Um, mm -hmm. We'll talk about a few races, of course, that is, that'll get you your, 
your, you know, your boa high for the day. Actually, I went to Instagram, which I don't do too often. I'm going to do it more. And I just saw this litter and I was like, oh, oh gosh, bang, we should click it. I, I mean, if I, if you could go back to my Instagram, I could show you what I was following. And it was just this guy's beautiful motley, beautiful motley right. albinos. And I thought, I'm just proud. I, I saw the motley. I started that Columbia motley. So I just see all these litters all over the world. It's just awesome. You, you, you brought the fantastic. motleys in, right? Initially. Yeah, I don't right? know. Wasn't that you? Uh, the motley story, I'll tell you that. That's what put my staple um, in the business back in the day. I had bought albino boas before people had back um, way back in the day and bred a few successfully. But I bought the motley boa from Ron St. Pierre. Story is, is this. It's a, it's a killer story. I mean, the motley boa is what everybody has worldwide. So let me give you the motley history. So the Motley Boa, um, Ron St. Pierre got it, and he used to be a breeder right near you, right in Florida. And I'm, yep. I still believe he's there, and he was doing blue tongue skinks, he and I would talk. He had um, two different types of boas. Yeah, maybe oh, I love, a gorgeous snake. I yeah, love that oh, one, wow. by the way. I love that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And so, that's much prettier, so I, I do love that, too. Let me go back to the original Motley. We could pull that up if you uh, yeah. Google search Motley Boa. Yeah, you could go back to Ron St. Pierre's original Motley, and I named him Norman. So I bought that snake back from him. He was asking astronomical numbers. I think it was probably the most expensive snake at, at the time. Um, How much? He put, it was $25,000. I mean, we're talking about. Wow. Yeah, so uh, I, I believe, so the albino boas were going for 10,000. I had proven myself, I bought the hats and got them. And I, I thought, man, I'm going to college, I'm making more money on snakes. It's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sitting in English class at my alma mater here, and I'm just, this is terrible. I'm like, I don't like school. There was hardly the internet back then. Uh, I'm going. What is a type one aneurysmic in genes of one in sixteen snows? I was reading reptiles, doing different things back then, um, breeding snakes. So I had to convince my parents to give me a loan. That's a cool motley. Let's just type in Bing motley, maybe nineteen. 98 or something. Yeah, it's a beautiful motley. Three types of motleys. That's the one with yeah. the striped tail, and you get the yeah. full circle ladder back, and then broken patterns. The motley is a very cool uh, snake. I texted you this link that we could talk genes, and the motley is a classic example of genotype and phenotype, and why you don't want to breed motley to motley, but some of the motley females are the best breeders in the world. Mm -hmm. So right. let's click the, out the, of this. The, I'm super, at this the, 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 the super motley, obviously, being is not a, a viable snake. So you don't breed You don't breed um, You, you don't know what's them strange, them. though, is back when I produced the super motley, um, I accidentally had produced it before. Just it popped out of one of the motleys. Sometimes that'll happen. You'll, mm -hmm. pull, you'll, you'll pop out the, to the super form, the, the dominant form, even from a, a phenotypical animal. And so that happened. So I popped out these two super motleys from a normal motley. And I thought, what the flip? I'm going to be, this is rich. I mean, this is the gorgeous looking snake on the planet. But then yeah. I never sold super motleys. I really didn't because I bred them myself later. And I thought, oh my gosh, that was just a super motley. Then they started to have some kinking issues, the slow tongue movement, you know, eyes. Uh -huh. There's a lot of super genes you don't want to do in boas. Right. Very right. similar to ball pythons where you don't mix some champagne bloodlines. They just don't make good genes. Super jungle boas, yeah. they're the most beautiful snake as pets. They don't breed. Super motley boas, breed, right. they can be good as pets. If I accidentally produce them in my byproduct, I, I people want a black snake and they're out of here. I just don't sell right. those. By some the of the, some of the, don't the Aztec and the Inca also, you don't want to do the super form yes. those, right? No, nope, yeah. no, nope. there's quite a few boas you don't want to do in super form. We could talk about that one. Hmm. Um, that's just a good example there. Something else you wouldn't want to do in super form is um, super jungle, super motley. Um, Super scory, I think. I don't know on that one. I think the super scory is kind of look like very similar to the regular scory, from what I understand. Okay. At least that's what some of the scory people are telling me. I don't know, you know. Right, but um, for example, uh, there's we a thought lot the super scory wouldn't be good. I thought the super scory was going to look like a like a, spy, a super spider ball python, you know, a white dead snake. But evidently, it, it's not. So I you did know. some really cool stuff, I guess, uh, with the labyrinth boa, didn't you? Uh, do the super? Yeah, and it came out the crystal boa. So that's a very that's, crystals, that's yeah. really one of the cooler projects, man. Yeah, Congrats on I that, and so. Jeff Ronnie on Thank that you. one. That's a very Thank cool you. project, actually. That's a, that was that was impressive to see the super form looking like an albino. That that's, yeah, that's, that's impressive. That's the blue eyed leucistic is really what it is. It's yeah, it, like, it could yeah. be that. I mean, yeah, that's what I think it is. Pigment. I mean, could be considered a blue eyed lucy has combinations like the ball pythons. You're not gonna see a true leucistic except from the diamond project in that black eye former acting yeah. that way. Is a, that's still the that coolest way. snake. That's still the coolest snake, but we're gonna well, talk they, about that in a minute. All right, so let, yeah. let, 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 me, let me drain you back for a second to, to, to the breed. Sure. I know a lot of people are really into the breed. So you cool 
for what ten, eight to ten weeks, okay? Yes. And of those uh -huh. eight weeks, you said you you do night drops where you have no hot spot at all. Yes, and, and that's where right. I do decrease the feeding. So I say I feed throughout the okay. season, but I give them a meal. Won't be able to every, digest. Correct. I give them a meal only of the adequate size there, two to three meals during that time. That's it. So okay. I do decrease right. some food there. So and then from I October, November, December, so, so what, around January, you start warming up again? or when Yes, it's, a, it's about a, exactly this, October 15th. I set myself a reminder, if you're not starting mm -hmm. to cool your temperatures right now, you know, you're, you're, you're running late. So okay. October 15th, I dropped the temperatures all the way down. They're used to getting down to about 78 and it's getting into the fall season. They feel this, this, this fall season coming. Boas are mm -hmm. extremely intelligent in, in figuring out barometric pressure. We can talk about the humidity and all that. But I bet you 10 bucks, and Jeff Ronnie talks to this too, it's in the Midwest where it rains more, it rains more where you're at. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't rain much here, but when it snows or something like that, the barometric pressure, the snakes really want to breathe. breathe. They yeah, breathe, you yeah, do. They breathe. You do, and so you can mock humidity to do some sort of barometric pressure shift, but that's about all that. They do feel that that storm come in. All right, so what, when we do, we're talking to you a minute, so you, you, you don't bump, do you have the humidity a little on the on the lower side during the cooling because you don't want high humidity and low temperatures, right? Great question, yes. Um, good question. So the humidity drops down to 65 degrees at that time. Okay, okay. Which and is still can, pretty high for most people. That's It still is, high. but I don't yeah. have many shed issues. Sometimes if you do have shed issues, soaking them, you know, gives you, I don't have many issues. Boas don't uh, really have trouble. Ball pythons are pain in the asses with the That's shed. why I do keep my balls yeah. more humid. So I've, yeah. I've found that keeping them in with bows hasn't been bad. I've kept them separate, done both. Me too. Um, Me too. I, I do like that because I don't have the shed issues with them. You know, if you yeah. keep them in that, that higher humidity issue, they don't seem to. How high do you blow up that, that humidity once you raise the temperatures back up in, in January, whatever, February, you know, whenever that starts? 80. 80. Okay. And that might be and hard for you even in Florida. How do you keep talking. it at 80? What's the trick? I have humidifiers running. I, I, spl I, I literally take gallon jugs of water and throw it on my floor, my <laughs> cement floor. And that's how I get the humidity up to in the 70s, believe, believe it or not. I, the I AC keeps that. sucking it right out of the room. I know. I can, I, I've got a solution for that. I'll show it to you. Tell we'll me. talk of that. Right. It's the Hydrofogger. You click on it right now. If you go to hydrofogger.com, you click okay. it up. You put an RO system on it. But the key is, is you got to have fans behind it. it it's a beast. Okay. That thing will do. How large is your facility that you want humid? Uh, um, 16, uh, probably about a thousand square feet, maybe total. That thing will do it. Just yeah. one machine. Uh huh. A thousand Hydro square Fargo? feet. Mm -hmm. You need to buy a correct RO system, run pure water through it. I have a RO. my whole my whole facility's on RO. So then you're fine. Just buy this product, and you're going to say, Jeremy, you just saved my issues with the fan behind it. What it's called Hydrofogger. Hydrofogger.com. They're going to love oh, me. Okay, hold on. Let me see. All right, I'm going to show because I this is helpful for they're people. They're going to give me a discount. Me. Yeah, because this one back in the day, Pete called. I mean, ultrasounds were ten grand. Um, right. The the if you watch a lot of my old videos, you'll see humidity coming through, and people would always ask me that question, and nobody would talk humidity. Why do you have such high humidity? And it was these just these huge machines, Pete. And I, they were expensive, and Dan Sutherland would buy them, and we would talk of them. And everybody was buying them. Now that, that was our solution to this other expensive machine that we had right there right. that you're talking about. There, that's it. That yeah. thing's a beast. Yeah, the guys are so cool. They'll send that out to say, "Hey, Jeremy sent you." I mean, we've sent them a lot of. So now, what do you do? You just put you just fill it with water like you would. No. A, um, so no. you put your RO system in there. See, there's this little. Uh, Click it, you know, um, maybe go to a video on Hydrofog. You just run a little line in from your RO right then to there, and it'll just blow as much as you can. It says it'll do a, how many square feet? Um, right there, the big one. You want the big one? You, you, there's a small, a mini fogger. Okay. It says it does up to 4,300. Mini fogger will do 1,000 square feet, and it might, um, but the Hydro, that one's big enough to just crush that room. Bigger so is I would, better, I always say. I'll yeah, and then way. you can always get the, the humidistat to shut it off when it's just too much humidity. So that thing will get your room to 75% of promise. Wow. So within okay. a week, you're going to set it up. I'll show you quickly. You and I can chat through a, a FaceTime. Right. And, and I'll say, Dave, let's see how that works. And you'll say, wow, that's impressive. Is it hard, is it hard to plumb into that? Because a lot of people- No, you know, it's so simple. So, so, so simple. Just uh, hit a YouTube video on it. It just goes you from would, your would RO you, system- you buy an RO system off of Amazon. Well, let's say you have, let's water. say like my water supply is already RO. So, what, you know, let's say you I have You just plug RO a little line into it and it okay. has a, a float just like a swamp cooler would work. Mm -hmm. So cool. it would get as much as humidity as, as that thing will tell it to. 
and then it would stop. Wow. Um, it stops if you don't need it. So if you put a humidistat on there, it just is like right. a, it's just like a swamp cooler. So you can set your room up, and the key is gauging where your humidistat is set, and it'll right. turn. Man, in the summertime, I can get it to hundred degrees. It, it's wow. awful. 100%, if I don't, hundred percent, hundred percent, it'll crush it. But you do okay. want to use RO because bad particles in the air. You'll notice if you don't use an RO system. They, you'll get this little white film on on your cage. Yeah, the cal. You know what it is? I, I now that I think about it, I have I have a calcium Ugh. reactor that puts calcium back into my water, so that might not be a good idea then to use my RO yeah. system. No, on your RO system, you can buy one. For two, it's they're great. They do hundred gallons per day. That machine run, right there runs twenty five gallons a day if it's running oh, wow. full time. Yeah, look okay. at it. It's a beast. I mean, I'll I'll just actually when I run in to show you a few snakes, I'll just show you the fogger really quick and just right. you'll just see. Well, I, I feel, if you were to walk in my room, I'd feel like you were getting off a plane going into Miami. Yeah. Well, I don't know what your attempts are right now, but pretend it's like it's 80 degrees today. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this question. Now, at some point, the boas will start to ovulate. And for people who don't mm -hmm. know, just let's, let's just take a very rudimentary approach. Ovulation is when the, the follicles are starting to line up and they're going to go into the oviduct, which is where they're going to get fertilized. Uh, by the sperm, hopefully, that's waiting there for them. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. And then there should be plenty. You and I spoke of this the other day about cats, multiple litters. If you successfully breed your, your boas, the, the key is you're not, you can't look at them as good as you can with the ball python. They, they do the lock, you know, so you can go in and show sure. Boas are constantly fighting, going like this, 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 expending so much energy. You that's, being, <clears throat> that's an important point you make, you know, and I, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but, but I sometimes see the, no locks, but they're constantly wrapped around the females, these males, and they never stop. And that's really what wears them down was what you're telling me, correct? You're absolutely correct. So if you can get in there and see those, and so I've gone to a, a fun strategy, breeding you know less snakes. Again, let's go back to the numbers. If you have 50 boas mm -hmm. successfully, you should have 25 litters. That'll keep you busy. That'll mm -hmm. keep you very busy. Um, so if you have 100 female boas, I should have 50 litters at 50 percent okay so that's that's having good rotation good husbandry good right. selection of females keep in mind these are ob by porous animals people don't talk of this too they don't have the lifespan of a ball python i'm sorry guys so right. after about eight years yeah if you're breeding them harsh breeding them breeding them i'm sorry the lifespan is eight to ten years so if you were to call me back in eight to ten years and say jeremy you're still well, I'm always going to retire no matter what, uh, 50 snakes. I mean, come on, <laughs> my kids, Florida or South Carolina. But, yeah. you know, of course I'll have that. I mean, what else am I going to do? Suck my thumb. So you should so, constantly be growing new snakes up to replace them. Absolutely. The, the, and the if other. you have a really healthy bow collection. So let's go back into why people don't, they think that bows are harder to get into or harder to invest into. Ball pythons are extremely popular. Boas are number two, three. Uh, the larger snakes like berms, you know, colorful mm -hmm. mutations. People want to see right. eye candy, cool stuff, right. cool, mm -hmm. cool, good party animals. So if you go to the market today, it's not about the race to get to the most expensive animal, although there are expensive animals. There's, you know, a lot more boa expensive high-end animals than ball pythons, I would say. And, yeah. you know, sure. I don't know. Uh, for example, it's harder to breed them, like you said. So there's not as is. many of them. That's yes, the whole it is. thing. People don't understand. It's not easy to breed boas. It Whereas is anyone can breed a ball python. So I think that there's less around, which I like. That's what's appealing to me. I like the fact that it's not like anyone can do it. And so your snakes become a little more valuable. And, and I don't mind putting more time in nurturing these snakes because they are more valuable. I don't, well, I don't even list a snake until they're almost a, like a year old sometimes for sale because – I don't even, I want to see what I got. Boas change a lot, you know, and, and I like they to do. get them into that bulletproof stage where they're eating well and everything like that. And, they, and they're feeling healthy and they're, you know, they're not intimidated. So, and there's no reason to rush it, like you said, anymore, because there's not a million people doing with this. No, 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 no. So you and I could talk projects that people haven't discussed yet mm -hmm. with boas, um, the ball pythons, for example, with the morphs. With the boas, you and I were just looking at a motley, for example. Don't yeah. breed the super. Back then, we were having pinstripes and spider ball pythons. Those two didn't make a super, but there's all these little phenotypical animals of ball pythons. Same with the boas that people are starting to pick out and breeding. One would be a labyrinth. You know, you would look at that and say, oh, man, that's a stripe. Yeah. If you didn't know the history or parents or anything, and say, what the heck do I do with that? Back then, we had right. genetic stripes. You'd breed it mm -hmm. right away and hope that you see it in the offspring. 
Well, I did that with the know, super fire right away. Nobody didn't. Let, nobody let's yeah, let's go. Let's go to the super. Yeah. Let's go to the super fire project. Sure. Because they, look, go ahead. You're the white snake guy. I mean, that, that yeah. that's that's who you're known. That's what you're known for. I know you as the. I know you did Motley's and everything like that. But everyone knows you as the white snake. You brought the white boa into the into the boa breeding world. I, I did. Mean, it's, it's the most beautiful snake of all time. It doesn't need it. There's no improvements that it needs. It's it's a white boa with black jet black eyes. And it's it's gorgeous, and 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 especially the females when they get big. I have that one big female I got from you, that fifteen. She's if she never breeds, I hope I'm trying to get her to breed. If she never breeds, I don't even care. She's such a gorgeous snake that I just like to go in there and look at her and, and hold her. She's got a great personality, and she's it's it, it's it's just breathtaking that snake. I, How did you get I, that I, snake? Give us the story. Uh, Everyone wants to know let's, the story. Let's get to that story. Let me write this down, though. I've, I've got you have too many good questions, and I don't want to get off track because <laughs> to get to the story, I'm going to write this down. Um, you, this you don't have to give us so many details, but just give yeah, us the details. Yeah, How but, you got this but to, snake? But to, to understand the, this, let's go back the to the motley first. Community. Motley first, and why I had this okay. dream. Okay? okay, so I, I'm sitting there reading this Fleet Bajli book. And I see in here, don't read boa constrictors, but all of a sudden there's this, at the end it looks like a white snake and it's in black and white and it looks, it's an albino boa, it says Maryland reptile breeders and they're $10,000. I'm back in here and I said, this is unbelievable. I didn't believe that. So I'm sitting there and, and back then it was a black and white photo, looked like leucistic when I got my first albino boa, I was depressed. I was like, this isn't the princess diamond. <laughs> and I'm looking at this black and white thing that I dreamed of having one day. Right, right. Um, anyway, so let's go to the model. First expensive snake, boa constrictor wise, people thought I was crazy. If you go back and blog the old king snake, you know, Naughty Wars back then, all that stuff. Oh, he's crazy to spend $25,000 on a snake, doesn't know it's genetic or this or that. Um, Ron St. Pierre had bred that motley. I named him Norman. I imp I got him. I know his whole history, and it's a very cool story. Um, then I'll get into the diamond, but long story short, I bought that mail from Ron St. Pierre. Ron St. Pierre had bred it and had slugs and six babies, I believe, and two were motleys. So I knew it was genetic somehow. So I, sure. I, I got those and then he kept one, one died. And then I got the original mail for $25,000. And then I bought his competitor mail, which Ron kept for again the next year. So I had both the next year. So I could really gun up the project. And now I've read him. So you had, the, you, had the, you had the market cornered, you on that. You were the top of the pyramid basically uh -huh. on that. Yeah, so I had him and his son, nothing else. So then successfully I bred that original Motley mail right away. And uh, Alex Barrero, I, I think he, he drove out from California. I'd showed him that they were grabbing. And I picked him up at the airport. Alex and is he, I can yeah, definitely see him driving. Like, oh my gosh, this is like 20 years. He traded me his Audi and he came up with a lot of cash. <laughs> he comes home from the airport. Oh man, I got some crazy stories. Yes, yeah, so Alex great. would love this. I haven't talked to Alex in forever. Um, and so Alex he, is a, good, Alex is a super intense guy. Alex is I like him. So a lot. smart. Yeah. 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 And yeah. He, he was from Miami. And Alex and I go way back. I used to go to San Francisco, visit him a lot. Yeah. Great, great guy. But he comes from flying in from California, I pick him up at the airport, and we come to my place, and right as he comes in, the, the babies are there. No lie. And oh we're like looking at him going, holy crap. That was cool. So uh, th that's an interesting story. So I got that motley going. And then back then, I couldn't even produce enough at $8,000 a piece. So you think that's a, that's that's good money to a college kid, all that. So oh, yeah. then, then you have a Crazy. family, and then all of a sudden, you have to grow. Your, you know, That's the start back then. So yeah. we start with motley bows, then we go to the diamond. Um, back in 2007. So, what do you want to know about the diamond? Let's let's hear that one. How did you get in here? I mean, we know about there was a a fire diamond, a, a white snake in Brazil in a zoo, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and somehow the white snake in Brazil, whether that was the snake or not, you got a hold of some kind of a white snake and bred it. I don't know the story. <laughs> I know the rumors. I want to hear your story of how this thing got into our collections. Okay, so it's a, it's a very cool story. All right, but to do that, can you click on um, just an image so you can show you people what we're talking about. Maybe yes. go to just Jeremy Stump Princess Diamond. It's just interesting because there's some controversy that came with that story, but it's a, it's a very interesting story. So back in 2007, while well, you can click these links, I'll tell it really quick. And this is all detailed and documented, even in a book written about me, that I don't like that, that book that's written about me and his version of this story that hasn't ended yet. Right. Um, so if you want to click on some certain links, I'll show you, and then I'll show you the original, then I'll show you what I know. And uh, mm -hmm. so back in 2007, there's this lady, tremendous lady. Her name is Giselda. She's a great friend of mine. She's in Brazil. I had the balls to, yeah, that's the gorgeous one. I think that's a, that's a good picture too. 
Um, yeah, maybe go to the internet and just type about. in like Princess Diamond. And this I'll is, tell this you says it all right there, this snake. Okay, so anyway, the Princess Diamond, the original one though. So yeah. um, if maybe you click my, go to my webpage, which I'm putting under construction right now. All right, uh, you keep audience. talking, I'll, I'll keep pulling. Stuff okay, up. so if you pull that up, I'll just show you this because I can show you the video of yeah. this. Then I'll show you the original animal and where I had gotten it from. So Miami is where I got it from, Dave, Miami. Okay. That's the best answer I'll give you. And I picked it up through myself, actually. Um, I went and paid the customs, paid to import it, and flew it home to Utah. Okay. Yep. And so now, you're, now you get this snake. It's a male, right? Okay, so that's a great, great question there. This is going to take you back to why there was an investigation. You'll hear, you know, if you type up the indictment. I'm not afraid to even talk about it all. Right. It's the Princess Diamond story. But um, the question was, the, the question, I already knew the answer. Um, was it the original snake that I saw back in, uh, I'm going to point to Rio where I flew with my wife and got this uh, contract with Brazil, which I knew at the time. And we got a lawyer back then to handle all the exports if I could successfully mm -hmm. do it. And so we went and negotiated something and it was a female I went to the zoo, it was an incredible experience. This lady had uh, penguins, uh, the most incredible, beautiful place in, in South America, but she had rescue boa constrictors, rescue turtles, rescue penguins. Right. It was a hospital zoo that she did a fantastic work with lions, all these things. She got raided by animal activists over this and other things. She's not a smuggler, she's a fantastic woman. She's probably the key to the diamond story and I'll tell you why. She's a good person, so she grabbed the snake and she said, you know what, my government is kind of corrupt. Let's try and do this legally. Right. What do we do? So we go and get an attorney and we find out that we can legally ship called through CITES, but to export it, it has to come through all this other stuff, da, 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 da. So we wait and we wait and we finally get the permits. And I even got permits and send her zoo how to cage these animals better, gotcha. especially a few that I'm looking at. As I go down and I'm looking at literally hundreds of wild caught boas, really cool experience with my wife. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to identify. Back then it was ball pythons. I kind of knew what I was doing even in 2007. And I'm identifying the looks of the different boas in the regions that are coming around there and why they're kept at this zoo, which was key for me. They had mm -hmm. over 300 boas and you know, it was, it was crazy. It was in nets and stuff like that. So I'm looking at varieties. They would come from Venezuela. They would come from Guyana. They would come from all these different areas. So I was really kind of- You must have been in heaven. You must have I been was like in a kid in a candy oh, store. Heaven. And I, I mean, if I were to point, I've traveled all, all over the world just because of the snake, Dave. Um, I've been through Europe, been to the reptile shows there, been to um, South America, traveled just to follow my dreams there. But that probably was heaven. And I went up to the Christus, and it's probably, you know, it's the seventh wonder of the world. And the original female, so if anybody wants to say that my snake is that same snake, which I will show is different, mm -hmm. um, was caught right below the Christus in the Jujuca Forest, right there. So there was an so oh. there was another one then is what you're saying there was more than one. Yes, and here's here's how I knew this. This was the secret of that. This poor lady had and I paid a lot of money back then. We're talking the motley. You're not supposed to buy, so you can't buy. I could do it educational wise through right. Brazil or so. We finally go through all this process. She doesn't know. I know that there's probably the most valuable animal in the world sitting over there. She knows it's meant for me. She tells me this in a cool story. Uh, she had this dream. Weird, weird, cool story but she's just a true animal keeper. And I saw in her heart, she would keep this for me until it all was okay um, with the CITES. But she said her government's always harassing her for her lions and this and that. She believes it's going to get stolen. So we come to the point where I said, okay, so let's either try and export it or import it. And she said, okay, let's try this. So I fly back down there. Mm -hmm. This not many people know. So, okay, Dave. Um, I was looking at you at least. I, I got to see at least your face. I don't know if I'm camera positioned right. There we go. Okay. So um, I fly back down to there and I have the craziest experience probably of my life. Um, I meet, and this is kind of, it was an ongoing case for her. She was in trouble with her government. I was didn't know this, but at the time the FBI showed up at my door at an international arrest warrant from Brazil <laughs> saying that I had done things that I didn't know. And they and it was sealed. All of this was kept sealed to me and and stupid. Uh, it was just crazy. It was bananas. But anyway, so I go back and it was five years later that they came. They had thought going through all this because of my marketing on the internet and they saw this money. So that's that was really the, the key there. 
They wanted to know. So they thought, yeah, I see. They thought yeah, yeah. You, they didn't yeah. like the fact that you were going to make money off of this. That's what mm -hmm. they were like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with making money off of snakes. No, look, you got to pay your bills. I mean, you gotta, I, I, I'm sure I your rodent bill money. and your electricity yeah. bill would, 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 would horrify people if they knew what it was. Right. You know? So let's go back to numbers. Back in the days, we're, we're doing that. You go over 150, if you have 50 boa litters and you're averaging 20 us, and you have 150 ball clutches, you're feeding. That's a thousand snakes in the baby season. So it's that's a, four thousand dollars, dollars a week. A week. A week. Yeah. A week. Um, a right, week. right, 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 right. Get it. I get and it, electricity I get it. bill is probably six hundred dollars. The electricity bill is is interesting. Yes. As, uh, sure. But if the, the electricity is worth it to keep your animals, let's just say. Of course, but you need it. There's no obvious. The, the, yeah. People don't understand. There is an expense involved in keeping, you know, animals, and and right. uh, you have to understand that, you know, especially when you have a lot of animals. So you get this. So when does the snake actually get to you? How do you get the so snake? So here's an interesting story. So I fly yeah. down to Brazil right. to go and make sure that. So she had. She comes up with this. She doesn't trust anybody. I have sent money to her. It was only cash. It was all legal money, it's foundations, mm -hmm. things like that. So they were trying to find illegal money, which never happened. And so she wasn't even paid. That it's sad. Sad story. What happened to her? But she comes to me, and sincerely, she lets me know that the diamond has died. The female, okay? Oh. Her female, right? So that's a beautiful snake. These are old pics, though. We're going back to Dave. If you could run a YouTube link through it, it's beautiful. Can you hear me? What happened? Then? Oh, I had to change my batteries on my, my, my microphone, sorry. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> All right. We good yeah, to go? I'm looking terrible, man. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, I'm good to go. Back in there, if you want to just run a loop of some beautiful – well, let's talk fire diamonds. So, I'm, I'm, again, if you could just text this link here, I'll run you through a few. You can mute the music, mm -hmm. but I'll just go to one of my YouTube videos, and, and then I'll show you some two positive fires, and we can talk genes, but let's go back to the diamond story. Back in right, so, so you get the you get back to the diamond story because that's that's what's right. really interesting. I'm really yeah, finding so this interesting. Very, it's I, fascinating. So back in 2009, I had probably one of the craziest things that's ever happened to me. Happened to me. I fly into uh, back. To, I've been to Brazil three times. Okay. Um, so I fly. If you look at the map, Rio de Janeiro is so far away from Manaus. Manaus is right in the Amazon. So I was going to do an Amazon tour and look at some killer snakes. Right. I had some information. I'm not going to describe the names and the places, all that, that there are some others, but not in Brazil. Um, you have to go and do some research and find them yourself. So I'm on a journey. I'm not kidding you. And realistically, this journey happened in the same amount of period of time where I was able to find <clears throat> the male, that one, beautiful. That one actually is, yeah, that's the, that's him. So in 2009, that's him. That's actually him in 2010. So if you look at the original 2000, okay, that's that's right after I had gotten him. Yeah, that's that's 2009. Look how big and beautiful that male is. Okay, that was a big male. Yeah, that's a big, yeah, okay, big so that's 2009. Now I let's thought it was a female. The original female. Well, the, because they think it's the same animal. Now, if you, uh, here's what I do at the end of this video. If you watch, I put it under black light, and this is a very interesting topic. I appreciate your you're telling me that it was one of the prettiest snakes. I find Sue superfires are acting with these genos genotypes very differently and making beautiful superfires, just like the superfire ball python. I've got some that have black spots, uh, yellow spots, but the key is that, see, that's a big male there. So, yeah. you know, people say ha back in 2007, I have videos of me holding this baby female at a zoo and all of a sudden 2009, I get a big male. So that's an interesting story I'm going to tell in my book, but I did end up with that snake and I believe I legally export it and kept it quiet until the FBI came running thinking it was from Brazil and then I had a big fight. So, so you got the male, the female died is what you're saying. Correct. Was over there. Yes. Okay. And then they've actually found a few more over there. It's on news media. Um, you would think if there's one, there's going to be more than one, right? And, and, yeah, and, there's pop tides. We could talk that. There's popped albinos. They're still popping albinos in Colombia. You mm -hmm. know, it's not that rare. In fact, they've popped a Motley Central. I mean, they've popped, they're popping things like that. It's just, they don't live. I mean, if you got a white snake that's in the jungle, I mean, come right, on. Right, right, right. So, so you get the snake. Cool. You, so you get the snake, mm -hmm. I, whatever the, the way you get it. You, you pick yeah. it up in Miami. I, you I get believe the snake. I had done it correctly. 
I had okay. believed I had exported it correctly. I had done everything correctly, but I kept it very quiet. Okay. Right. So they had to go through all these records of shipments to find that they thought that it had a flaw in the way I did it. So I had to admit mm. a flaw in the end of, of a shipping thing of could have charged like a hundred dollars more in taxes to myself. And then everything was legal. Then there was another little war on the fight because they seized animals from me and they sent them back to Brazil, but I had to say yes. Did they really? They you know, sent your animals back to Brazil? Oh my gosh, gosh. So if you went to the stories, uh, <laughs> yes. And they have all these videos of like their grand entrances back and all of this stuff. But was that how, was, were you nervous? Were you scared when they came to your house? I mean, you had to be petrified, obviously. They, you know. When the FBI comes to showing up, pal, and they have this note on your door, and <laughs> your son wakes you up on September 5th at uh, seven in the morning. Uh, and he comes and jumps in bed and says, Dad, the FBI is here. I'm like, what? Child's missing? Who? What? What? Yeah. So that's <laughs> jumped on my nightmare. And, the nightmare day. And yeah. I walk out, and literally my street was swarmed with, uh, well, 55 agents and the oh my come God. Oh, I mean, this is all going to be quiet if you cooperate. I was like, okay, come in. But I knew right yeah. away because it's a search warrant right. and they wanted the yeah, diamond yeah. and all they start asking me questions. I said, all right, let's, uh, let's go. Let's go. And Stu, did you Stu, have, did you have the fire diamond at that point? The super fire? <laughs> this is the greatest part. So I'm like, you guys are a little late to this party They're, We've been following you for five years. This, this, any records. And if, and this is James Comey who indicted me because this is an international indictment. The old yeah. James there. It's, it's the Comey administration. They say, uh, yeah. oh, gosh, I was going to Congress to testify on behalf of U.S. ARC two weeks before they knew this. So yeah. they come rolling in and they're like, OK, we think that you have this from Brazil. And I, th I said, oh, contraire. And then they pull that if you're going to lie to us anything, you know, yeah. then that's a crime. The Martha Stewart thing. So I start to get a little panicky. I talked too much. But you should have called you. You should have said, Lord. Uh, and now that yeah. I know, my attorney's kicked my butt. I called Larry Backman. And he was 250000 to do this. He's a good snake friend of mine, a great attorney. He was hired. Then I went with a great other attorney. Oh, we fought God. it to the end. And we fought, felt a good fight. I ended up taking a little spank you for the United States. To make a long story short, you can spin it anyway. It's all public information. Even the judges unsealed right. all of the warrants on my case. You could find anything on the case. Um, mm -hmm. But it was, it was hell on my life for a while, of course. Oh, I wanted. can imagine. It yeah. was embarrassing. It was extremely embarrassing. I didn't believe I had done things right. The snake world was always very supportive of me, especially after I legalized the project through going through this. So that's what I did. I had to you make sure it was legal right. for my customers because in this one I'm looking at, they say, be quiet. You're still in investigation. You might not get in trouble. Yeah. It said to me, and I'm looking at this scared of crap, it says, we're going to come after you and your customers for everything. So I'm sitting yeah. there going, oh my gosh, what do I do? And they say, run business as normal. I'm like, oh gosh, you're calling out my integrity. Go, <laughs> go ahead and do that successfully. So and long story short, we go to war, we go through meetings. Um, they, they want me to waive my statute of limitations because it's been five years. You can't be committed of a crime of that right. nature if it's a smuggling a crime for five years. And it's not even, it's, it's weird. I could explain the laws now that I've learned a lot of legal stuff. Right. I mean, it was in legal war forever. And especially with US ARC, I study that stuff. It's important that everybody go support US ARC. They do a Absolutely. tremendous job. 100%, right. especially what they're doing they're really in Florida. Good. They're doing a great job in Florida. Yeah, so. they, they, they are tremendous. And Phil's a good friend of mine. They're, they're always been supportive of me. I support US ARC. Um, let's go back to that, uh, that point. Well, you then. know what? Yeah, yeah, it was, a, got, it was interesting that I was, so I was yeah. indicted. Um, and then I was never arrested for the case. I was indicted and everybody not, never wants to be indicted by Federal no. government, they come with everything. So my indictment's scary, you know, and then the indictment's strange because they bring up my sister, my wife is named Kara. They threatened my wife. Cause she yeah, they, they didn't look like your sister was there. It was really your <laughs> wife. That I was there. Back to that, that time I was down in Brazil in 2009 mm -hmm. where I'm going and looking. So I had already gone to Rio de Janeiro and looked at all these types of bows. Dave took tons right. of cool pictures and mm -hmm. identifying markers back then. Even thought I saw, you and I had brought, brought up the emerald species. I thought, I believed I saw an emerald fully, fully super striped boa that looked extremely similar to, um, and I wish, uh, there was like three of them too. They looked like the labyrinth boa mm -hmm. that they did, and but they would looked more um, more constrictor, constrictor back then. So I couldn't tell because there was, she had animals from even Panama to here to here. What, what is the super fire? What is the fire diamond? Is that a, is that a, so the fire species? diamond is a phenotypic, it's a fire diamond species is, is imperator. And I'll tell you why. Okay. It is because of the region. Yeah, it is imperator. How come now, it has that long, it has like a long head, smaller eyes. Well, though I've noticed. So here's the first question. If you believe in God, I do believe in God. I don't know where the diamond came from because I didn't catch the snake. Okay. Mm. Or did I produce it in my wild caught facility or in my facility? I didn't do it. So mm -hmm. I don't know. 
I was handed, I, I was, I got the animal, I believe. Oh, wait, but what does it look like to you? You're an expert. You know, this oh, is. It was a leucistic bow, without a doubt. I'd already seen one. I'd been. No, I don't know. What is the, what does the head shape look like to you? You know, the head shape is, is tremendous. It's, uh, it does look more, I would say, um, gosh. It looks yeah, constrictor-ish, well, right? It does look yeah. constrictor-ish, but it also looks like that long Panama head, I guess you could say, on a big Panamanian boa, too, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. So it's it's more of what I've bred it to that I think it's given it that look. Oh, um, oh is that what it is? Because yeah, yeah. it, ha it has a completely different look to me. You know, it has than, a different head. That's what fascinated yeah. me about it. Um, I love the it. female didn't so much, the one that I saw in Brazil, that I do believe was constrictor-constrictor. Okay. Um, you know, I do. And I believe that. So if you go and I was, I'm showing my map and geographic. So you think your male that you got was it was a, was an imperator? Yeah, I do believe that. But okay. if he's imperator, it's coming exactly. And and here's where I do believe because this lady has given me information on where I came. It's probably near that Bogota, Venezuela, Colombian area where you can mm -hmm. get imperators up in that area. Okay, maybe so that's, it's that's where I believe that. It doesn't yeah, matter either way. It's imperative. It's legal. It's in the it's in the world for life. Okay, so yeah. that's that's the bottom. How do you line. feel when you see this boa all over the place now, mm -hmm. uh, and you see the fires and all the different morphs it's been bred into, and then you see super fires, you know, pop up. There's you know there's there's, a, there's not that many that have been produced, but the people who produce them. Are you proud? Do you say you know what? Yeah, you know, I was hell in yeah. my life, but I, man, I no, brought this yeah. into the boa. I brought this into the boa world oh my without God, me. I'm so no, proud. That's why there's I'm no I'm white snake. I can't make enough of them, Dave. Yeah. I mean, really, I can't. Um, collector value. Now, I'm breeding different. I didn't realize he would act cool. So here's, let's go back to the original diamond story. I get mm -hmm. this male. Everybody knows that the other one's a female. Even other people are offering this lady that female, vet zoo, all of that. Mm -hmm. So I end up with this male, and I breed it, kept it quiet. That's when I first introduced it. So um, back, so they believe, let's just go back to the original female. In 2007, they thought maybe I had smuggled that one way back then, okay, okay. and put it in my pocket when I went with my wife. But they would have been five years way too late to the party. <laughs> in your pocket. No, I don't know. Back then, I, uh, speaking of which, back then, the, that, that's funny you mentioned that because um, I have family from South Carolina when I was a kid. Every summer, I would go and catch annals and everything and uh, to all your box turtles and stuff. I bring them back to Utah and sell them at pet stores, yellow rat snakes, right. stuff like that. And I brought them across on the plane back then in those days. Yeah. No lie. Back yeah. like that. So, yeah, because it was, that was before they x-rayed yeah. everything there. Well, you know, but they, once I remember, I got this is my, my dad got so mad at me. We're doing the family trip. We're coming out of, I think it was uh, Tallahassee or something like that. And they did do the right. airport scan. And they're like, you can't uh, take all these animals here. And they did, you know, uh, back then. You know, it was crazy. No one cared back then. Yeah, <laughs> and no and my cared. dad even didn't even like, he hates snakes and that, but he liked a turtle. We caught one right off the road of South Carolina. We brought it back and it peed on the, the stewardess. She said, we got a turtle uh, on the peed on it. That, that was back in the day. But back in that 2007, I thought this is a true story. I thought, wow, I could put this thing in my pocket and go right back to <laughs> because it was a small female in there. And my wife, no, oh, way, well, no it was way, small. No. I didn't know it was. So small I'd already there. been to the attorneys and they're already talked. No, don't do that. Don't do. That. But I thought of that. I was like, man, that would be probably pretty easy. When I was in Australia, I thought about it. I'm like, man, I can play. Can yeah, I, I know. But don't, don't, don't ever break. Oh, off. I would never <laughs> do it, Jeremy. I don't. I, I'm smart enough, but I'm just saying, you think about it because it's like this is such a gorgeous animal. You want it. It's so yes. bad to get into the hobby, you know. And uh, I thought of it, and I thought, you know what? If I'd have done that, maybe I'd have saved its life. I don't know, <laughs> but you I, got I the know. look. You got the white boa into the thing. Now, let me ask you this question: They seem to be harder to breed. I find I've been I I bought a, a pair from you back in fifteen or fourteen, and then I bought another one from you in fifteen. That I find them very hard to breed. Of all the snakes that I've had, all the boas I have that I bred, I bred everything. I cannot get these things to breed. What, are one? they more the difficult? Fires or super fires. Just the fires, the fire to fire. Fires to produce are the, the super fires. to breed for me. Okay, yep. so the super fires. Okay, back in 2014, it's the first year I produced them, Dave. Mm -hmm. So you got the first white. I got the snake. first, yeah, ones. You, you produced, yeah, right? so I had a good season. I was all over with the legal war, I think. They're I gorgeous, by the way. What's yeah, the markings you. on a regular fire? Can you tell us what okay, the markings yeah. are? So the fire has a great marking. Maybe if you could go to uh, an online thing, I'd just point them right out to you. There's some, yeah. uh, the, first of all, the, the key characteristic is this head that you're talking about. The head mm -hmm. marking on a fire diamond is always like a, I guess you could say like a super jungle looking boa head kind of. There's an arrowhead on the, the head. Mm -hmm. So that's a right. one key if you can see it, but not all of that is true. Some of them have that just narrow kind of like um, genetic jungle look, just that, that super jungle head. If you look at a few of them, that's one mm -hmm. characteristic. 
the, right. the two characteristics that I knew, this is what is cool. So back in 2009, when I got Diamond, the Princess Diamond Project is what I called it, because this was a project. I didn't, mm -hmm. you know, I, I never bred him back to his daughters, but I produced from him in 2010, 11, 12. And then I was in, I was 13, but it, he was dust. I even did a video, I'm retiring him. I overbred him. We were talking about how you stretch your males. Even though a fat male, I was, I was pretty stupid and jealous. I loved that animal. But so you, oh, you over, so you, 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 you killed the male, the, the original male? Uh, well, I'm not going to say killed it. Come I'm on, not right? saying on purpose. I'm I mean, saying you think, you think that was the pro why reason he died? I've never said this. And I will talk about it on my web. It's a sensitive issue. I, I do fun little videos of my cat dying and all that. But yes, the diamond died and I lost him. And my close employees and family knew it. And it was, it was hard for me to lose a snake that it was very hard for me to lose my first motley. Normally. Thank God you bred him and had and had had babies from him. You know? Yeah, thank but, God. Man, it was sad, so funny. I get indicted by the FBI. The FBI comes to my door and they're like, "Where's the white snake?" Um, you're way late to the party, guys. It's you. I'm not it was. I'm not thank God you didn't have it. Right? It's well, probably you best you didn't have it. If you're lying, you're going to. If you lie to us, we'll know. We got to work to see all your computers. Said, Go to my computers. This. Is, why didn't you ever talk about it in YouTube videos? I'm like. I have to bring up a – who wants to ever hear a story of – who wants to see Lassie die? When you, you, don't, you don't want to tell Lassie, people, hey, I, I killed the most I – mean, Come on, we're going to watch Lassie. Right? Yeah. And we're watching videos of Lassie from 1954, a beautiful dog. Who yeah. wants to see Old Yellow go down? Today we get to watch Lassie and Lassie's Lassie. Yeah. And tomorrow you'll get to see the diamond, and the diamond will still be the diamond. Yeah. Okay? Or the super fire. I, I, for fun, had fun with the terminology because a lot of mm -hmm. ball people do this and – World's first or whatever. Right. Princess Diamond Project. Um, Super Fire is an Emperor Diamond, just because I love the term Emperor is the Imperator right. Boa. Emperor right. is the key. I, I did a Reptiles article right. on that. Yeah. Second is um, it just is it's Diamond is a rare gem, but the Fire Diamonds combo. So when I bred the original Super Fire, people thought, oh, you're so stupid. You can't sell these because you don't know it's proven genetic. Mm -hmm. Well, Tom Burke and I had bought those. We briefly got into that, those Central American paws of the stone burke line which i breed a lot into the fire line yeah. back then and they told us oh those aren't genetic you can't sell the heads well i produced two, i got two males tom burke got a male and two females and i bred those males to normal bows and they were great breeders sent them to a lot of people produced het t positives and i knew they were going to be genetic without even thinking about it so yeah. money back then same with the super fire when i sold the fire diamonds i knew that they were going to produce statistics however when did you produce the when did you produce the first uh, super fire diamond 2014. Now, okay, so that was the first year you, you actually proved it out. Okay. Yeah. So interesting story there. Let's do the, the full true history of his genetics and bloodlines. Back in 2009, get him. 2010, successfully bred him. Bred him to a motley. Okay. So I get motley fire diamonds right off the get. I bred mm -hmm. him to one of my original motleys. Go back to the motley because motley females are great breeders. So yeah. immediately I do this little boa dance way back in 2010. It's the first year I got him to successfully produce, and I'm looking at all these motleys, and they're weird looking motleys. And I produced a lot of motleys. Mm. Like these are different, way different. There is something else going on here, and they were like ghostly looking. Mm. So interesting. I'll talk about the second way you can tell it's a fire. First of all, you get it from bloodline of somebody you know that's got a fire. Right. Second, because uh, people will say, "Oh, it looks like a fire," unless it has a fire, it's not. Um, you want the genes behind it. Uh, so. The second time, I got two litters from them that year. Bred them to three females, actually. So successful of one male, three females. Same year, next year, three females. Same two years, two females. So three litters, three litters, two litters. Okay. That's out of one male. So, yeah, I lost him. But I can't get a female to breed, you know, that many litters. So if you're just doing, you know, odds, things like that. Yeah, that's why there's a lot. There, There's more, but... I lost a lot. We, I talked about that in the DVD where I, half my collection of fires were killed in a heat accident. I brought them oh, up. So, oh you know, God. I lost half my collection there. And that won't happen again. So I had to rebuild it back from 2014. And you can rebuild your bow collection. Really, those animals are in your collection. Your collection mm -hmm. is different every eight to 10 years. If you were to come and see me in 10 years, you might see like 15 of the same boas or not. I'm going through it in a good way of just how I successfully see the what people right. want, looks, pets, wise like that, and, and run my animals that way. Well, 
the super fires that have all the crazy black spots in them, almost that look like uh, like um, um, what is it called? The uh, cow retics. What, what what's going on that's with those? Awesome. Okay, so that's from a different bloodline that I'm using. Okay, so we talked about that CA fire diamond line. I have CA single CA single mom. Central American. For yeah, people you who just don't know did a CA video is. of yeah, and that's the Stoneberg line or whatever. But they mm -hmm. are just fantastic. I, Sent a lot to Pete Cole back in the day, and he'd get him to breed these honking Columbians. I have some big ones that have that big head too. They're just gorgeous. Hardy animals, good breeders. So we talk about selection of breeding. What I want to breed the diamond front to, I wanted to breed them to something I could produce well, motley, and good breeders. So stuff like that, I bred it into that line. That's why I have these CA and also VPI. There's just so many different areas to breed. I didn't want to make right. an albino. Uh, I don't need an albino super fire because we can do that in other things. You know, you right. you with through the sharp bloodline and other things people i tried to make blizzards and you know the blizzard super motley actually i made and that's a failure just because oh, of super motley yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, really yeah. Sick bow almost but so uh, what's that but what's the boa that has all the, the black spots in it is okay, that so a super motley safe. no no no. Oh. no 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 that doesn't even have the motley gene in it it's got oh. uh so here's the key when you see your go back to your original pictures of when you brought your first super fire in and go look at her now I, I promise you're not going to see any more black spots in it than you did. You might see some yellow peppering coming. No. You might see the snout change or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. It's not like the coral gene, and this is where I had it, the FBI locked in the bag. In my opinion, I could prove that my animal was different. Just through the black light technology of, if you look at the animals, its heads, its size, this has black spots here. You throw it under black light and you could see it. And I would flash that just all the time. And that I taught them that black light technology. I used mm -hmm. to look at the YouTube videos of those some uh, now i i really need to get back into that there's some great work that you're doing on youtube other people but i was watching during this case some ball python guys were doing leucistic ball pythons and putting black them under black light and looking at the genes behind them i thought that was genius so i started to do the same with pides and leucistics and they could prove under black light through videos and times that my animal was different from the one in brazil which helped that lady in her case because she won her case in brazil she was accused of the same thing classic example of that one right there so see that yellow that comes in yeah that look at all the spots is that the front yeah, of the motley are, no the spots are just that's random you can produce okay. all white ones and spots ones but i find that with this fire line it's this yellow that comes in that i like and mm -hmm. then all so my daughter has one named rosie it's no black spots all yellow mm -hmm. and then i have that one that brian barcheck does and i call it gina she's fully black spotted like cows and i have three of those so what now are you saying it's just random it's, 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 it's just random it's random there's no g the yellow so, in this animal okay. is not random, but it's if you go to just a super fire ball python, if you went back to my Instagram, I just produced, mm -hmm. posted one the other day. It's a classic example of that. The yellow and the black can increase in different on each animal. Therefore, they're a little bit more valuable. So it's, yeah, it's beautiful, super white snake. Well, some people want a really white. like totally white snake. And then some people might like the fact that there's some, some cool. And there's stuff, nothing I can do about it. I can just make them and there's the black spots that'll come in a lot of them. I believe it's coming from, that was a good question they're motley um i yeah. haven't seen in fact the motley ones i've seen they're more clean and white so right. i do know that they're, that's there and that's why i identify the motley gene is there because i don't want to breed it to another motley to make super motley so stuff. do you think that adding a million genes and creating a super fire will change the way the super fire looks or is it going to be like a ball pipe and it just get everything gets erased when you get the super fire no i do believe that the super fire has changed the bow world just in the fact that the fire diamond is pheno phenotypically different so you have no, 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 no. What, no, what, what I'm saying, Jeremy, is do you think that, um, like when guy, in other words, people are trying to add a lot of genes into this, into the fire projects, but when, once you produce that super, does that just erase everything? Is it no, possible for these other genes to leak through is what I'm yes, saying? Yes, it is possible for the other genes to leak through. It and is. What, what, where have you seen that? What gene combinations have you seen it with the motley one. If you put it under black light, you could see these circles underneath it. Right. And then you can see it barely faintly under just a, a, light, a light look. This one right here that you're looking at right now, mm -hmm. I can tell is a T-positive albino super fire from Tom Burke's line. I know that. I know that yeah. animal. I proved oh, that. So that's, that's actually also T-positive T and positive super, fire. super fire. Yes, that is. And how fire. can you tell that? Uh, I can tell by the eyes because they have a purple slit instead of a red slit. Interesting. Okay. So they have a more of a purplish yeah, look. Yeah, it's like an albino slit. They can't have the... It's like an albino, it's a purple slit. So it looks, mm -hmm. that's the, the cool thing about the super fire boas um, because they're, the eye of the bow is so much different. The iris, when you put it under light, it, it contracts really fast. So you don't get mm -hmm. to see it like the ball pythons. When you pull it out, you can see that nice black slit. Well, right. if you pull up a super fire and you're looking at it from above, 
and you get to look at that that laser light, they're intelligent. You know they use their eyesight a lot more because they'll laser in like Darth Vader right. if you're in the dark and they'll look at you. They're an right. intelligent animal. That's why I really mm. enjoy the boas. It's, it's yeah. passionate. It's that they're intelligent animals and you know, ball pythons are great. They're they're more instinctual animals, but boas really do have personalities, especially these fires and the super fires. They do have some personality to them. Yeah, they're gorgeous. They're gorgeous. And, I, and they I are think alike. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm glad that you talked to me about these super fire questions because I get it all the time. If I now click on my Instagram or my Facebook and what do you what do you enjoy. think about what do you think an IMG super fire would look like? Oh, I can't wait to see it. But there's some great people in Europe. I, I'll show you my IMG fire diamonds. I, I had a female that I almost went and the female died on me. Can you believe it? It was oh. an IMG. It was an IMG fire diamond that I had gotten. Um, and it, 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 she just, I don't know. She just died of me. I don't know. You know it's one of those things what. that you don't know. I did everything yeah. I thought right. And she just, just didn't so cry. Back in the day with, uh, again, we're talking about oviviporous animals, not that you can't do them successfully. Let's take a hundred ball clutches and you're somebody big in ball Python land. You think that how many clutches do you think, Dave, if you have a hundred clutches a year, good female rotation, how mm -hmm. many are you going to get to breed? Do you think a hundred? Uh, you're going to get 75%. 75 yeah, I'd say 75% really, really of the bad. ball pythons. Yeah. yeah. Annually. Okay. That's, that's. Well, always, I always say if you're 50%, you're good. You know, you're good. You know. yeah, yeah, you are good. Yeah. And, but you're doing good. I think that you can get 50% if you do it well. Ball python, 75%. You have a better chance. Plus, you have a better chance of your females yeah. going year after year after year, especially if yep. you take off eggs. They're Absolutely. not internally incubating. The hardest yep. thing on the bow of female is internal incubation. The longest sure. I've ever had a female. Six years of litters. That's the most litters I've had from one female. Ever. Wow. Ever. Okay. Five litters from But back. snakes die too. Yeah. yeah and, I mean, and, and the life. When you breed. Die, yeah. They do. It puts stress on them. So a lot of good, you know, but you you have to, if you're doing it as business, I understand that. You have to work your animals as best as you can. There's other people who have pets. It's very easy to have a few pets, yeah. you know, and breed. And you'll think, last year I had a few breeders that, or just keeping their eyes 20. They had better boa season than I did last year. These are guys that just have, you know, a couple 20 animals in their yeah. basement and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah, there's good, you can, you can have success with boas. It's, it's just how you keep them is key. Um, and how you pick genetics, because now that we're getting into these genetics, like the fire, the fire is influencing the jungle gene, the, mo the motley gene, all these other genes, the VPI mm -hmm. line, the T positive line. So it makes a cool byproduct. Yeah. So with like, say a call albino, when I breed an albino to that, you're looking at a hat, a normal boa with the fire, the super fire being exactly, you know, if you look at it, it's phenotypically showing itself. I could see that immediately when I saw the babies from the motley litter and then the other, I knew all of them were fires. Of course, I knew they were all hats. If you're thinking you have an albino and you're breeding right. it to normal, but I could see that genetically they were different until I bred a fire diamond to a normal and I got half fire diamonds. To, and then I knew exactly what was going on. Right, you and knew it was, was incomplete. Until, yeah, that was until like 2013. Right. And I'm going to what? this, you know, the, back in into the phenotype and the mm -hmm. genotype. You know, it, it, it's important to, to know Jump. that. Just just simple genetics of, yeah. of how they work. So jumping, uh, jumping forward, I want to ask you a question. I don't mean to interrupt, but sure, I want I want I, I know you only have a limited amount of time. We're running out of time. I, I want to just get to this pipes. Um, yeah, pied. the pied boa. Obviously, we we saw. We might just do a follow-up. I could send you a couple of videos, Dave. I would like Absolutely. to show you some snakes. I'm going to do that. Yeah, um, well, I'd like to do another video with you where you're in the snake room. Yeah, let's I think do that, that. That'd be more fun. Yeah, that, but dinner. let's finish yeah. up this interview with the pied because the Got pied, it. we saw them pop up in Central America. There was one, and there was one in Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, according to you know what Vin Russo had said, it looks like it's a, it's a Boa Sigma, they're calling it. Uh, Meaning? The, that's the uh, I guess they have the new the designations Boa Imperator, Boa Constrictor, Boa Sigma. They, uh, that's the region. I didn't even from. know that. That's yeah. something I'd like to talk that's, a bit about. I, I'm going to write that down. What it, it really is? They're saying yeah. That's what yeah. That's what Van Russo like, says. It's a Boa Sigma. Yeah. Kind, of, kind of like the rich island of the Boa Sabogi, a new subspecies. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're that's how they're designating them. Boa, Boa Constrictor, Boa Imperator, and, and Boa Sigma. There's three designations now. So and is there different subscales to them? No, can... no, no. They're saying that's oh, that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So, is there really a true sa scientific classification of that? I mean, I got yeah, to I, that's the new that's the it's new scientific cool. classification. They've gotten rid of all the amorale and I this might one and that one. Yeah, we classify Princess Diamond jeans as but <laughs> <diamonds. laughs> I think with I think you <laughs> can't classify anything when you stop mixing stuff. But all right, yeah, so let me see. Getting back to we're breeding for fun day. We're creating cool pets that we want to get. 
You asked good question about stack pie. Tell me the pie. What's the? Let's go. Are you involved in that pie project, uh, Jeremy? At all? Dave, are you? Yeah, I am. I am. Yeah. I hope I am. (laughs) Yes. We don't know if it's genetic yet, so no, no one's involved in it really. You know, it's genetic. It's genetic. It's genetic. And so, yeah. So the pie's a game changer, just like the diamond is. To we can create stuff that people haven't seen. Right. The pie ball python's my bestseller. It's what I make the most of. I mean, right. you can make so many varieties because the baby never looks like the adult. You get the low white yeah. pied. The reason I believe that the pied bow, and I still think there'll be a few more pop up. Watch. Okay. I hope okay? so. Okay. Yeah, me too, because everybody wants a pied. I hope that, and uh, I pray for you and your cancer, that you're going to produce <laughs> a pied before you go because that's my dream. Back when I was dreaming as a kid, I believe. Don't kill me off so fast. I only have a little I'm nodule. Saying, I'm, I'm saying me, myself. You might I'm, kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You might, get him, sure. you might get him faster. I might have to call you and get him, Dave. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Who oh, knows? I'm, you know what the truth is? You don't know when these bo- boas are going to breed. Obviously, there's hets out there that are floating around that we hope are hets, you know, that are, people are selling. Um, does that's, it, okay, I, so here's, right? the, here's the truth with the pie, which what I've learned from the diamond. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking anything. Um, yeah. So it's depending on what you're going to breed yours to. If you have hets or if you have, you, you if you have pass hets, I don't, I don't go that route. I didn't go that route. Um, I don't know what route you've taken. And, and I have hets that are told to me they're hets. So they look like hets, but who knows? You know, I don't, you know, I don't trust anything. I agree. But if you and I, and you and I snap some pictures of each other, you know, back and forth, I'm going to say, to, I'm going to ask to you, phenotypically, do they look different from a normal boa? Yes. Yes. Okay. But I'm then going to pose a question to you that's going to kind of blow your mind a bit. And we talked okay. about it quickly is leopard boa. Do you think they're also had leopard boas? Possible. Yeah. Because I believe look, that the pie might they, be a true leopard boa. You think so? Mm, one of them that I've seen, I do believe, yes. And I've seen the expression of the hats in the leopard bow is a very complex gene in the way that it shows its hats. It look, yeah. Oh, yeah. True. True. You're right. That's a, that's a good point because het leopards, oh, I almost think that they should be called incomplete dominance, right? You're correct. Yes. correct. Yeah. That, that is the, the correct terminology. I, I, it is an inc- incomplete, just same as the square tail boa, incomplete dominant. But there's very few that do that. They look very leopardy, the heads of the uh, of Yeah, but they are 66. That's what I was always afraid of with the fire diamonds until I bred fire diamond to normal and I could visually see half came out fire. Here's the second marking back under that. We were talking about the, the how you tell. You go underneath the, the patch of the chin and the, even a fire will have a leucistic patch under its chin. You know what? My wife noticed that the, when I first bought them from you and I told her she was crazy, but she was right. Because you no, weren't telling. You weren't giving away any. Power, you, weren't giving right? a, you, <laughs> you weren't giving away any. Uh, oh, yeah. There you go. Do you, don't you think that looks kind of like a leopard boa? It does. It looks exactly like a leopard boa. Now, why do you think that that could survive in the wild? It's probably because it's just a low white pied and didn't get picked off. Well, because you know why the pieds seem to have it, the dorsal aspect seems to be very normal, and it's underneath it. It's the white, so maybe they they camouflage better. But can you imagine that in a in a sunglow someday? Ugh, yeah. Or how about uh, an IMG? Yeah. Well, that's almost panda, a panda boa pied. pied you know. I have a panda ball pied for yeah. sale right now. If anybody wants a male panda pied, I love it. I love it yeah, too. This is this does it for me. So I was joking yeah. back then when I was talking about health. I was saying to myself, I need to get in. Uh, you look I great. Kidding. You look great. I, I'm getting into the health where I'm saying I want at least. <laughs> We're old, uh, Jeremy. Nice. When you get old, I, things I know, go wrong. That's sad. Yeah. We are. You know what? The, you know what? The truth is, I take such good care of myself in terms of the way I eat, the supplements I take. You know, that's my business. I sell nutritional supplements. Right. My species of nutrition, um, and all I do is educate people on, on diet. That's what I do for you know a living, other than you know breed snakes. And so, for me to to get that, it, it was humbling a little bit. But at the same time, it was I think I needed to confront it. And so, my whole life has been you know learning through experience, and then passing that knowledge on to other people and how to get through it. Not just because beating cancer is not just a physical thing about getting it cut out or because I, it's only a nodule on my thyroid. You know, it's not, it's not like I have liver cancer in there, but it's, yeah. it's the process mentally of accepting that you have the C word, so to speak, and getting through that, that thought processes. And I think that's where I can help people stay focused and be in a, in a positive state because any kind of disease state, as you know, is very, very mental. You know, it is. And, it's scary. You can uh, make it worse or you can make it better by how you think. And that's my, the truth. I have it in my family. It's my mom passed away of mm-hmm. cancer. It's just terrible. Too. My best friend. Um, so I've seen it and uh, I, I fear it. 
but I'm glad that you're on that. And so killed Tom Burke, you know, unfortunately. I know. You know, it's it's, it's awful. It's you know, eventually, honestly, Dave, I, I do believe everybody's gonna die some somehow of cancer. <laughs> I do I don't know. Really, well, I, you know what it is? You, I mean, you gotta it, just you gotta you can't like neglect it. your health. Yes. You gotta go for your screenings, you gotta go for colonoscopies, you gotta get your heart scanned, you know, uh, and you and I think that everyone should get thyroid scanned. There's a lot of thyroid cancers. Now, luckily, I thyroid cancers that. don't really they don't really progress that 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 you know severely. So my like industry is the, the, the stomach. So colonoscopy is great. There's this new system where you don't have to go into the doctor anymore and get put to sleep. Yeah. So that's 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 the danger zone for me. Got to check it out. Your, I agree. You got to watch your health. That's why I love talking to health nuts like you. Mm -hmm. I don't have the yeah. guns and stuff, but you know, <laughs> you got to anyway. keep snakes healthy. That's that's the key. I, I feed my snake. Yeah. I got to probably take good care of my. Snakes doesn't do myself. My, yeah. My yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and I, I think that the, the bottom line is that you can't you can't walk around with your head in the sand, and that's really what it, what it amounts to. But I got to tell you, I really enjoyed this conversation with you, and I know you had a lot to show us. So I want to do a part two with you where we actually go part, into your know, snake room. With the animals. You I'll can bring your phone attached. around, and and you'll yeah. show us all the I stuff that's new, going. I got on. this new attachment called Smooth, so I could have. Uh, oh, awesome! Turn okay. this around and and. I we're going to do, we're do that for part two because I want you to I want people to see how you have your snakes set up, you know what your you know husbandry really is like and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm going to show you that fog or two privately. I'm just going to send Absolutely. you a video because I'm going okay. over to check my room and check on my snakes awesome. and make sure everybody's happy today. Awesome. It's great well, to see you though, Dave. And I would thank like you, Jeremy, so much, and thank topics. you for taking the time. Talk we jump to topics. We jump topics. I want to stay more on cue next time because I'll jump. Impossible around. for you, but that's I fine. That's that. That's, that's, I love your energy. We Your energy is great. It's contagious. Combos. How many genes do you want to stack on bows? There's only four. <laughs> <laughs> we could talk well, all day, Dave. But you have uh, a great you, day. If good. you guys have questions for Jeremy, you know, what's the best way for people to reach you? Through Instagram? BoaConstrictor.com is email. Now I'm okay. getting more right. of that. Uh, I'll talk to you later about the reptile ring. Other things like that that I've got going on. But Jeremy Absolutely. at BoaConstrictor.com, best way to get to me. All right. Thank you so much, thanks, Jeremy. Thanks. And uh, you, got, you have a great bow season. I'm going to give you some tips. You're going to do good this year. I, yeah, you know what? You, he has given me tips and I have to really, I really appreciate the fact that you take the time, you know, to, to talk to your customers and to talk to your friends and stuff like that. And we've talked about other topics on the we phone have. too. So I appreciate your friendship. Over I here. appreciate your friendship too. And can I ship right. to you Wednesday for Thursday? Absolutely. Right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. All right.